Hey guys, my name is Shirley and welcome, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am just going to be taking you guys through some of the most terrible and worst money decisions that I made in my teens and early 20s. I feel like sometimes on the internet, we just tend to show the good side of things or share our wins, but I don't think we often share about some of the mistakes that we've made or some of the losses that we've experienced. So I just thought I'd share with you guys um, some of the mistakes that I've made in the hopes that you guys won't make the same mistakes and I don't know make better money decisions in the next video however i will be sharing with you guys some of the best money decisions that i've made so if you are interested in that make sure that you've subscribed and turn on your post notifications so that you don't miss that upcoming video without further ado let's get straight into it the first um, mistake that i made is not tracking my expenses and not really tracking where my money goes it's only probably in the last few years that i've kind of gotten strict into you know going through my bank statements checking you know what money's leaving my account and where it's going where I think when I was younger I would just get paid and then just spend whenever I wanted to spend why it's so important for us to track our expenses is because our minds we are terrible at predicting or really understanding where our money goes if I was to ask you right now how much do you think you spent on food in the last month or so you probably have a figure that will come into mind but if you actually go through your bank statements for the last month and you actually check to see how much you actually spent on takeaway i can almost guarantee you that the figure that you thought initially is not is not the same as the actual figure that left your account. So I think it's quite important to make sure that on a regular basis, you are just going through your bank statements because sometimes you might have subscribed to something that you completely forgot that you're subscribed to and then they're still taking money out of your account. Try not to be oblivious. Try not to be naive about where your money is going and try to put in an effort to just, you know, go through your bank statements here and there and make sure that you actually are aware of how much is leaving your account and where exactly it's going. The other mistake that I made as part of being young and uninformed and trying to be a nice person or whatnot is offering to pay for other people and kind of being a pushover. So what I mean by this is there were so many instances or so many examples when, you know, you'd go out for, I'd go out for lunch with some friends or would go out for dinners and then sometimes you can't split the bill. You know how some restaurants don't let you split the bill. And sometimes I would just offer to be like, okay, I'll pay for this one and you guys can transfer me your money. There's nothing wrong in doing that per se. Um, but I think there's just been many instances where I've done that and my money never actually ended up coming back. Um, I know there's this time that we went to like a really fancy dinner with a group of girls. I think the bill was like, gosh, more than $500. Um, and I offered to pay, but then till this day, I still haven't gotten some of my money back for some people that I had paid for. So I guess I'm not saying don't offer to pay for things like that, but I'm just saying don't always be the person who's gonna do that. Um, try to like plan ahead, don't be a pushover. On that same topic is lending people money and telling them not to worry about it. I don't know, maybe that's just something I did. I know that's a mistake that I made, I don't do it anymore. Again, there's nothing wrong with lending people money. Sometimes, you know, you don't know people's financial situation. Sometimes people are really struggling and they just need you to lend them a hand for a short while or whatnot. So there's nothing wrong with lending people money, but there was a point in time where I did, I was lending people money and my reflex was, reflex was just to be like, oh, don't worry about it. So let's say somebody's like, oh, can you spot me like a hundred dollars? I'll be like, yeah, sure. There you go, don't worry about it. If you do that constantly over time, that small amounts of money really does add up over time. So if you wanna lend people money, that's okay, that's fine. If somebody comes to me and I'm in a place where I can lend the money, definitely I will, um, but don't feel bad about asking for that money back. I know it's weird. I know some people are probably like, what do you even mean? Like, obviously if somebody, if I lend someone money, I'm gonna expect that money back. But I don't know what was just going on with my mind when I was a bit younger. I just felt bad if somebody asked me for money and I expected that money back. I know it's weird. It might not make sense to everyone, but that's just the mindset that I had once upon a time. And sharing it because there might be somebody else who has that mindset right now and all i'm just trying to say is don't be a pushover it's okay to help your mates out it's okay to help family out or whatnot but just don't be a pushover because it can end up leaving you in a very tricky financial position the next mistake that i made was jumping onto the zip pay and after pay bandwagon so i think around 2017 maybe 2018 i opened up an after pay account and i think i had that for about a year a year and a half maybe then I closed it um, 
and I've now just recently reopened it, like I think in the last month or two months. Um, but I plan on actually closing it off this month because I went back to it. I'm like, nope, I don't need this kind of stress in my life. So I'm closing it off this month and I will be doing a separate video on buy now, pay later um, payment options. Um, they're not inherently a bad thing per se. Some people use them in a very, very good way, but I just know myself. I know myself to be a spender. So for me, buy now, pay later options were just not the best personal decisions for me. It makes you believe that something is cheaper than it actually is they have potential to really spiral you out of control and it's so easy to start off with like an after pay zip pay and then um it breeds like a negative habit sometimes and then it leads you to taking out credit cards it leads you to taking out loans and things like that so i think if you are if you can help it just pay for things cash when i'm paying for cash for things I don't tend to spend as much as when, for instance, I'm using like an afterpay or a credit card or whatnot. Of all the mistakes that I'm talking about today, this is probably the mistake that I still struggle with a lot. And it is just falling into the trap of instant gratification. Like guys, I have a real problem and I feel like I need help because I have such an issue with instant gratification. When I want something, I want it right there. And then I don't like waiting for things. I feel like it's just the society that we live in now, right? Like you can, if you want food, you can literally just get it off Uber Eats and then it's delivered to you pretty much right there. Then if you want to order something, you can just order it on Amazon and it's delivered on the next day. So I feel like the society that we live in, it's a society that just like feeds on instant gratification. We don't have to be patient for things because we just have access to things just at our fingertips. So I find I really do struggle with waiting for purchases sometimes. Gosh, I'm so embarrassed to share this story. Like the other day, I just went like on a book shopping like spree. I literally spent like $400 just on books. Sometimes it leads you to spend money that's not within your budget. Like I hadn't budgeted to spend $400 on books for that month. I'd actually budgeted to only spend $50 on books. But then I ended up spending $400 just because I decided I wanted something and then I just wanted to get it right there and then. So if you can start training your mind, especially at a young age, to be patient for things, to wait for things, just because you want something, you don't have to get it. Just because you feel like a really deep desire for getting a certain item it does not mean you have to purchase it right there and then another mistake that I made from when I was much younger is not consolidating my super I essentially started working when I was 14 at Macca's then moved over to work at Kmart and I've like had a number of jobs you know since every time you get employed you know you fill out your employment documentation and usually each organization has their preferred super provider. So for all of those people not based in Australia, super is like your retirement fund, essentially. Every organization would have its own um, super fund that it's connected with. So majority of the time when I would apply for, um, for a job, I just thought it was easier to just select whichever super fund that particular employer was associated with. And then it meant that my super was in different accounts, which obviously isn't a good thing because the effect of like compound interest and all that kind of stuff isn't as great when you have little bits of money in different accounts. Um, so if you can, if you do have money in different super accounts, try to consolidate it. And when you do join a new workplace, try to keep your super fund the same. Trust me, it's not as complicated as it seems. I used to think that it was so complicated to select a different super fund, but it's not. It's And you can e easily give your super fund um, a call and they can give you all the information that you need right there and then. So try as best as you can to keep your super in the same um, in the same account because it really does make a difference in the long run when we're talking about things like compound interest and stuff another mistake that i made was essentially getting a credit card when i didn't need it i think i probably got my first credit card when i was like 20 or something like that it was like a thousand dollar credit card and i didn't even need it at that time the reason why i opened that account is i knew i wanted to buy a house um sometime in my early 20s and I thought that I needed to have a credit card so that I could show the bank that I am able to pay loans off and things like that. But here in Australia, it doesn't necessarily work like that. You don't need to have had a previous credit card to get approval for a home loan. That again, I'll go more deeper into, into another separate video. There's so many other ways that you can build up your credit score. Simple things like paying your mobile phone bill on time. Those are all little things that can help build your credit score. You don't need to open a credit card. So for me, I just found it wasn't necessary. 
and I think what was more detrimental really is I opened one without really understanding how credit cards work. So if you are gonna open a credit card, I'm not saying don't get a credit card, but if you are gonna do it, just make sure you really, really educate yourself on exactly what is involved with having a credit card. Make sure you're familiar with all the terms, you're familiar with all the interest rates and different things like that, and you really do research. And also, if you are gonna open a credit card, make sure you don't make multiple inquiries and try to avoid increasing your credit limit I remember I did this and I only realized this much later on when I was looking at my credit report I opened up a credit card right and then I increased my limit I think by like $500 or something like that and then I did it again and then it ended up reflecting on my credit report as a different inquiry so every time you increase your limit it reflects it on your credit report as a different inquiry and it just adds up as having multiple inquiries on your credit report, which is something that you don't wanna do. So if you're gonna apply for a credit card, make sure that you apply for the credit card limit that you need and try not to increase it over time. It's fine now, like my credit card, my, my credit score is fine. Like I was able to get a mortgage last year, no issues, even now my credit score is, it's fine. But it's just one of those things that try as best as you can to really, really educate yourself, really, really do your research before tapping into that world anyways so those are essentially some of the personal finance mistakes that i made in my teens and my early 20s hopefully you guys have picked up a few things or two from this video and hopefully you guys won't make some of the mistakes that i made um if you have liked this video make sure to pop that like button it really really helps out a lot and if you can comment down below as well some of the mistakes that you've made i would be really keen to learn from you guys as well so comment down below some of the mistakes that you've made maybe early on or that you're currently making that you're trying to work through and make sure you stay tuned for next um, for the next video that's coming up where I talk you through some of the best money decisions that I've made anyway thank you guys so much for watching the video really really appreciate it with all that being said and done dream big keep all and hustle hard I'll catch you again in the next one bye